welcome to this 18th session under the module 4 posture and movement we will be discussing under class number 18th this is the today's session is on chair characteristics now to recollect whatever we discussed in last class the gist of last class is that uh, posture and body supportive device the below are the influencing factors these influencing factors what we mentioned the formal to informal transition is going on that is that uh, from formal to semi formal and informal atmosphere we are cre trying to create uh, to invite creative environment uh, and design accordingly towards uh, feeling at home always. So, if you feel at home in your workplace also then one can work with creativity means the less physical load will be on him so he will be able to perform better now for that not only the physical dimension requirement is there the behavior matters how we behave to do certain work or spending leisure time that also we should consider with a physical dimension concerns. Another topic we discussed that the multi curved appearance of vertebral column that plays a great role in maintaining the postures. When we adopt awkward postures, this vertebral column takes the load additionally and thus it affects the performance and it raises quick fatigue. The common problems related to posture we also discussed and finally, in last class we discussed the exclusive treatment of various varieties of requirements with inclusive design ideation. So, that the exclusive requirement will be fulfilled within a framework of inclusive atmosphere. So, with this background the today's topic the class number 18th is chair characteristics. Now, what are the elements or concerns we should consider for a chair design. Now, the, the if we see the seat now the free seating arrangement seating arrangement with a beautiful atmosphere in a busy work busy place varieties of seats and the seating posture also varies and seen here with that varieties of furnitures are being developed and this concern demand more from your furniture. Now, with this it can be said that the seat should have context and requirement concerns need and value addition. Though a chair or a seat requires a seat platform 
at a specific height and a backrest to support the back and armrest to support the arms hanging arms. With this basic structure, the addition that is value addition with aesthetics and comfort is our concern today for ergonomic design practice while considering some seat design aspect. The chair characteristics. Nowadays, the chairs are coming in market that quite often it claims that exclusive ergonomics etcetera tag names. Now, these names, these words attached to this furniture, it is a business claim or it is a beneficial effects that needs to be analyzed and considered critically. So, the chair characteristics, the approach to design in the ergonomic way that we are going to discuss now. General considerations for seating is that take account in difference in body sizes, anthropometric considerations and use context. Now, if we see a typical chair here, it should have some bases. If this bases has a castors, the swiveling wheels, then it can move. If less than four legs components are there, then the free movability may be a problem with the five legs and all the swiveling wheels fitted in it, it provides a free movement facility, height adjustability, the armrest it also should have adjustability front back and up down and back and the backrest also. So, these figures are the necessary for general use. Now, for a working condition, what should be the ideal usage of uh, seats? It is said that uh, alternate seating with uh, standing and walking is necessary to avoid uh, a static load on body. The height of the seat, the height of the seat and backrest of chair must be adjustable. In addition, the chair should be swiveled. This reduces the need to twist the body. Limit the number of adjustment possibilities. Now, a furniture we may provide many adjustability features so that it can have or it can adjust the body as we prefer. But for mask use and for the easy maintenance and use, it would be better if we can limit the number of adjustment possibilities to fit a certain requirement. Now, provide proper seating instructions. Now, a furniture is a chair seat is given, but how to use that chair, how to sit, whether you should bend or how you will you should use the armrests and etcetera, it should be properly instructed. Or what are the adjustment facilities are there and how to adjust this should be instructed properly. Either with inbuilt features, inbuilt matter or a supplement of with the instruction sheets. The specific chair characteristics are determined by the task. Now, 
for dining chair for dining purpose it is better to have almost 90 degree angle hip and thigh and trunk angle so the chair backrest and etc it should be in such a way that it does not allow your back to go more than 100 degree backwards it assists you to attain that upright position like that if a sofa is used for that it is assumed that backrest will go back means the trunk and the thigh that angle should be more than 120 degree or around 120 degree like that and obviously the dining chair height should be more than the sofa height and why it is necessary that we are going to discuss in next slides. Now, certain common problems if the seat base is shorter than the your buttock to the popliteal length then there is a flesh cut at the lower thigh area. If it is more then there will be a problem in lower in the back of the knee that is the popliteal point area. If the height is more than your popliteal height then what happen the leg hangs and so a flesh cut at the underneath of the thigh and also to get the foothold there is a problem in the foot area. If in a 90 degree angle here if backrest is given at the shoulder level then it creates a problem at the lower back that is lumbar area. If the backrest is in a slanting position then it points here inches here and so the problem is here and if it is a reverse also it does not provide a good back support. Now the heights and etcetera are also it says the same problems similar problems. Now, again now if we see a typical seating requirement here a seating requirement in a VDU the visual display unit maybe computer or whatever. Now, here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 points are given here that needs to be considered like one that seat back adjustability should be maintained the lumbar the lumbar support has to be provided seat height adjustability should be there number 4 this one avoid excess pressure on underside of the thighs and back of knees popliteal these are the concerns foot support as required foot support sufficient leg room so that this space is sufficient leg room should be provided no obstacle under the desk number 7 is that the forearm approximately horizontal to the work horizontal forearm minimal extension flexion or deviation of the wrist number 9 the screen or viewing surface the height the height and angle should also comfortable head position number 10 is that space in on front of the keyboard this much space has to be kept free for to for palm support here to support hands or wrist during pauses in king function. 
So, these are the general typical seating requirements for a VDE. Now, the typical workstation requirement. So, this workstation person is working here with computer and some other accessories in this. Then what should be there? Now, we all are discussing in reference to the seat design. Now, the adequate now here also 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 points are here. The point number 1 is that uh, adequate lighting should be there. Point number 2, the adequate contrast, uh, no glare or disturbing reflections. Number 3, the distracting noise minimized. Number 4, here the leg room clearances to allow postural changes. Number 5, window covering needs to be there. Number 6, software etcetera related matter that appropriate to task adapted to user provides feedback on system status, no undisclosed monitoring etcetera. Number 7, the screen stable image, adjustable, readable, glare and reflection free. Uh, if these problems are there, then this person accordingly will adopt a peculiar posture to focus on that uh, and then the, the seat may not support uh, those positions. Number 8 is that uh, the key position keyboard usable, adjustable, detachable and legible. Number 9, work surface, this one allows flexible arrangements, spacious, flare free. Number 10 is that uh, work chair adjustable and the foot rest should be provided if it is necessary. So, with this uh, we can we say that uh, there should be a sufficient leg room, so that uh, the leg free movement uh, is uh, possible. The heights of the work surface uh, seat and feet must be compatible. So, these are the movement possibilities should be there, here also movement possibilities should be there and specifically this type of furniture if it is used then foot rest and a, the table surface may be adjustable and some foot rest can also be used like this. Use a foot rest if the work height is fixed, so that you can get a proper foothold. Now, if a person sits, so now normally what happens? This is the 90 degree angle. To assist raising, one cannot raise with this 90 degree foot position. So, foot has to go back eh, around 80 degree, and then this from this top or the knee, this area is at around 7 to 10 centimeter space should be kept free so that. Eh, it should assist raising. And now, if the leg extends, it takes a curvature like this. So, this must space to be kept free for free leg room. Now, the percentiles figures and etcetera. So, now for any seat design, we require body dimension. Now, for what type of dimension we should consider specifically for seat width is breadth. Now, if this is a seat here, now suppose this is a back of a male form and this is a back of suppose female form. Now, if we see the 95th percentile of this thigh to thigh distance and this is the female 95th percentile of thigh to thigh distance, then which one we should consider? Instead of all those things, take a combined data, male and female combined form, and then its 95th percentile you have taken, 
and then accordingly if you have the CT then male female most of the people below that combined 95th percentile of hip breadth may sit or may accommodate in this scene. As for example, it can be said that how why we should use this percentile figures etcetera like a watch and wrist watch. A wrist watch the circumference male and female and male female combined consideration is that suppose this a this dimension circumference is the fifth percentile and this b this is this circumference is the 95th percentile of the wrist dimension. Now, the distance in between that fifth percentile and 95th percentile this area we should have the various this holes here. So, that this wrist watch any person having wrist circumference from fifth percentile to 95th percentile can use it. So, with this it can be said that data may be obtained from males or females, but the higher value including proper allowances should be considered to accommodate most of the people where free accommodation plus avoid rich value is considered. Now, another thing is that why in certain furniture for a two seaters a specific reach is provided here. So, that this reach does not allow a third person to sit here. So, this type of specific special features also can guide people how to use the furniture. And this type of studies are normally done to see that what would be the seat pattern while standing to sitting the what body behaves and accordingly the for the CT angles and etcetera are decided. Now, if we see this figure though seats are provided, but now see the posture they are attaining. So, same furniture similar furniture, but varieties of postures are being adopted depending on the tasks they are performing phoning, phoning, reading and etcetera there is like that. So, furniture usage depends on the context. Now, here a very common fist is being shown here. Now, see the, the clearance value is a concern here. So, that to come out and to go in and now when this, this figure says that when for eating he leans forward the leg also comes back. So, means what now with this it can be said that when you bend forward the, the lower leg also takes a parallel position. In this figure when a person sits like this way when the angle goes back this back rest then the it is difficult to keep leg in a direct hanging position. So, it leg also goes straight. So, now it says that now with this figure it can be clearly mentioned that there is a parallel relationship between trunk and the shank. The shank is that lower leg and this is the trunk. Now, here if we see from this figure when a person is standing, so the trunk and leg in a vertical plane. Now, when he is sitting with a 90 degree angle, then this trunk and this lower leg is in a parallel position. Now, when this back goes 
around 100 degree here, then leg also comes forward. So, when this is 100 degree, this is also similar leg goes here. Now, till here it is said that till 100, 100 to 115 degree angle, we require only lumbar support. Now, when it goes to around 150 to 120 degree angle here, then it requires around shoulder support and then accordingly the leg also comes forward. And then when it comes forward, now you can see that this buttock also, it also extends to forward when it goes back. Now, when this angle is around 130 degree or more, then in this position to maintain head in an upright position is difficult. So, we require a total head support. Now, when the 130 degree head support is there, the leg also comes with this 130 degree like that way. So, now from here to here, whatever the distance it comes down, here the same thing it also goes up and then this also the same. So, this one top this the buttock area and the foot, foot height these are almost same. So, with this it can be said that the trunk and the shank it maintains a parallel relationship. When it goes front like this way, then leg also comes back. Means what is happening? When we try to raise one leg normally goes back and with the pushing force it goes it takes a upward standing position. So, this feature we must consider while developing any kind of seating device. Now, thing comes the what would be the length of this seat depth seat. Normally, it is said that from this popliteal point to the buttock, if we take this length, suppose this is the total length. Now, we can say suppose this is the total length from buttock to lower leg, buttock to lower leg, this distance. Now, if we use backrest, then this comes little forward. So, around some space we do not use. To assist raising when legs leg comes like this in this position, then this portion we do not use. So, these are this place is the only effective length for the seating. So, this part is kept is mentioned here like that. If the total distance, if we divide into 5 portion and then the last one tenth of this, if we do not use and the last one tenth, if we do not use and then second one tenth, if we have a curvature like this way, then it matches with our normal body here. Yeah. And now our thigh bone is not a straight one, it is a little bent like this. So, to match this, it is said that from this two third position, if the front one takes a 0 to 3 degree angle and the back side 0 to 5 degree angle, it gives a good comfort for the thigh. Now, with this figure, if we have a foam over it, so from distance it will look straight same, but with your body pressure it will take automatically this shape, so it will be a comfortable seating. So, all this seating, these are the principles. Now, we have to use this in specific design concern. Now, with this, just we will see here a little demonstration that how it is used. Now,
now with this uh, now lastly we said that uh, if a body tends to bend forward uh, then then leg also tends to go back uh, now with this position if we want to do certain work in front uh, bending then there may be a pseudo falling tendency so at that time no backrest is required but a specific knee rest may be provided and then how the seat and knee rest joining to be developed is a special design concerns now there are varieties of joineries may be possible so this concept is called balanced chair and occasionally used during seated work may be useful but this also will have some other constraints like that eh? indian ladies wearing sarees and etc or those who have knee problem for them it may be, be some problem or longer duration work eh, it may not eh, be possible so there are varieties of uh, kneeling seat with eh, and without backrest eh, is eh, being developed eh, nowadays now a concern is that eh, in a counter kind of thing where the backrest as well as a front bending is necessary then what type of design solution we may have like if we have a seat surface like this and then stand and then a backrest like that that and then if a concern something like this so while bending forward then the seat may take this type of shape and while bending back if we press it then it may give a common back rest oriented seating facility now when you from bump forward then there may be may have a special folding knee rest and etc so this type of concepts one may develop and a series of furniture ranges can be conceptualized now these are the some of the dimensions are provided here so all these dimensions concern here the percentile values and their indian data concern this indian data the reference has been taken from a, the source is that chakraborty 1997 that is that a, a book called indian anthropometric dimensions for ergonomic design practice published by national institute of design from that this dimensions have been taken and male and female combined data in millimeter is provided here in different percentiles so this is for the different arm rest table top height foot rest and in different supports are also provided here in this diagram so this diagram may be considered while making a design concept now with this now what are the specific features we should consider that is that human dimensional consideration for general seating the first thing we should feel that people sit on the floor and also use a high platform for seating purpose is usually designed designated as a seat normally seats mean chair type seating with and without armrest and stool types of seat without backrests depending on the various contextual requirements there are varieties of designs and some new ones are also being developed whatever the considerations aesthetics etc the primary consideration should be the comfort so that people can sit on a seat for a long time without feeling any physical as well as physiological discomfort so after developing a furniture it should be properly evaluated with proper trials from the subjects opinions as a rate using different rating scales scales 
should be conducted and objective measurements like physiological parameters should be considered for evaluation whether that furniture is really good one. The general problems encountered in sheets not meeting the body as shown in earlier figures that should be considered. To arrive at a comfortable design for sheets, the human body dimensions and the static anthropometry of the user should be considered first followed by dynamic dimensional variations along with the task contextual behavioral demands. The selection of anthropometric details and the relevant design features would depend on these requirements. Generally, sitting is directly to other furniture as for example, tables, counters, desks, a variety of work surface and spaces should be considered. Seats for general purpose included common chairs used in homes, offices, etcetera. Under the category of special seats, low seating arrangements ranging from sofas to car seats and train compartment seats should be taken care of. Everyone would not be comfortable on a seat if a proper backrest, full thigh buttock support, armrest and proper food holding are not provided. Unlike the common seats for certain tasks like typing, drafting, etcetera, where forward bending is required, the concept of a 15 degree forward inclined seat that is balanced seat chair type of concept has been developed as an alternative for use in sedentary work. Now, the balanced chair, the knee rest seat concept like this, no backrest is required as the hip angle is below 90 degrees. The forward inclined body is supported by a knee support. Though it has several advantages towards supporting the normal body posture adopted during some sedentary work, further exploration is awaited and possible beneficial effects are being tested. Now, body supportive device with both frontal and backward trunk bend. A combination of these two concepts means with backrest backward and without backrest frontal of forward inclined and conventional horizontal or backward inclined seats using proper adjustable tilting mechanisms for forward and back inclinations with appropriate backrests may be tried out for general purposes. Here the general human dimensions related to specific parts of the seating device would be discussed instead of talking taking examples of every type of seat of various contextual requirements. Now, the common seat comp components are the commonly used seats have the following parts. The seat surface, seat stand for seat height back rest, arm rest and cushioning. Other seat related considerations are leg room, foot rest and clearances like that. So, with this we can say that the seating device design is not only the physical body dimension concern, it also concerns with the different task oriented behavior that uh, the person or the occupant of the seat performs and 
feels comfortable. So now with this we are ending today's session and next session the class number 19 there we will be discussing the vertical work surface and its dimensional concerns and behavioral requirements for a design development concern. So, now with this we are concluding today's session. Thank you.